What could be worse than losing control of a gigantic passenger jet over one of the most densely populated cities on Earth? This is exactly what happened to the pilots of Air France Flight 11 on the 5th of April this year. On final approach to Paris's Charles de Gaulle airport, two pilots battled for control for their Boeing 777 while alarms blared in the cockpit and the plane rocked from side to side. Stop, stop. How did they get into this situation? And more importantly, how would they get out of it? This is the story of Air France Flight 11. At 9 o'clock in the evening, on April 4th, 2022, Air France Flight 11 pushed back from the gate at John F. Kennedy International Airport in New York. The aircraft, a Boeing 777-300ER, was bound for Paris, a seven-hour journey. On board were 177 passengers and 15 crew. In the cockpit were two pilots. Nobody on the flight knew it yet, but in a few hours, the pilots would be battling with their controls in a desperate attempt to save the lives of all 192 people on board. At a quarter past nine that night, Flight 11 took to the skies above New York and made its way east out over the Atlantic Ocean. The 777 is a modern long-haul passenger aircraft. It has an excellent safety record and remains one of the most technologically sophisticated and fuel-efficient aircraft in the skies. It is one of only two Boeing aircraft with fly-by-wire technology, meaning that all pilot inputs on the controls are fed through computers before the flight control surfaces on the wings and tailplane are moved. This reduces the chances that pilots will inadvertently put the aircraft in a dangerous position, like an aerodynamic stall, an overspeed, or a bank angle that is too steep. The particular aircraft being used for this flight was 17 years old, having first entered service in the year 2005. The flight progressed as normal over the Atlantic, and by half past seven in the morning local time, the aircraft had begun its descent into Paris. The first officer, sitting in the right-hand seat, would be flying the approach and landing the aircraft at Charles de Gaulle. He would be using runway 26 left, which would require him to fly out to the east of the airport and then to turn 180 degrees to line up with the westerly facing runway. The skies were cloudy, and the pilots would not break out of the bottom of the clouds until they were just 300 feet above the ground.